Good day! In this video, we will be discussing about the different molecules that make up the living systems. So this lecture is obtained from Biology, the Unity and Diversity of Life, Chapter 3. Uh, this is a rather long lecture, therefore I will be dividing this into three videos. So the, in the first video, we will be discussing about the chemical basis or some chemical reactions related to um, the biological systems. And then the second part, we will be discussing two of the four major classifications of biomolecules, which are carbohydrates and lipids. And in part three, we will be discussing about proteins and nucleic acids. So for a, a background, so in biology, the chemical, uh, the most important uh, chemistry or the most important element there is carbon. So carbon is the back, back, backbone of life and it can form four covalent bonds with other atoms. In fact, this is the reason why carbon is very important because carbon forms stable covalent bonds with other atoms as well as with other carbon atoms. So it's like a Lego block. So you can form very long chains, a large variety of structures such as rings and chains. It can also form both polar and nonpolar bands. So as a review, a polar band is where there is an equal sharing of electron in, an, in, um, in a covalent band. So for example, if you pair carbon bonded to oxygen or nitrogen, so oxygen and nitrogen are electronegative atoms. Therefore, they tend to siphon the electrons towards themselves. They tend to attract their ele their, the electrons towards themselves. Therefore, the, the bond between carbon and oxygen is unequal with the electrons tending to go uh, to oxygen. And then for the nonpolar bands, there is equal sharing of your electrons in the band. So you have, for example, carbon and carbon. So they are equally shared between the two. And another one is carbon and hydrogen. So these form nonpolar bands. So remember uh, later you will see the importance of the polar and nonpolar bands in biology. Now, the stud, since carbon is, uh, forms very complex structures, so there are a lot of different types of carbon, uh, carbon, carbon molecules. So we have a separate field for that, which is organic chemistry. So when you say organic chemistry or organic, it means you have, a, uh, these are compounds, these are molecules mostly obtained in living systems. It's, they, they came from the organs of living systems. So there are many, um, there are many elements that are also present, not only carbon and hydrogen, you also have oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, what else? Uh, you can actually find also um, the halogens there, chlorine, fluorine, oh, fluorine is not much, but chlorine, bromine, something like that. So we have uh, hydrocarbons consisting only of carbon and hydrogen, so the most common type of organic carbon is the hydrocarbons that is hydrogen and carbon atoms. So these are actually the fuels. Um, you have your butane, tentane, the natural gases. So those are hydrocarbons. So as you can see here, you have a very versatile structure of your carbon atoms. So you have a carbon that can form ring structures. So this ring structure is one of the most common thing you will see in sugars. So sugars, starches and fats such as like that, this one, the donut. So these are mostly composed of carbon molecules. So you have their starch, which is a uh, very large carbon-based molecule. We have your sugars, we also have lipids. So this here on the right, this is um, two, uh, an example. Uh, this is glucose showing two different structures. So your glucose molecule, which is a component of your sugar, your table sugar, contains glucose. Your glucose uh, can exist in two forms. So you have the open chain form and the ring form. So the open chain is once it's a straight chain of carbon, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, and then it cyclicizes to form a ring structure. Now you will see here repeating units, repeating structures of OH, OH, OH. So we call them the functional groups. And then this is another type of functional group. Now a functional group is 
defined as an atom or small molecular group bonded to a carbon in an organic compound. So, they have large impact in chemical properties and impart, impart chemical behavior. In fact, you have your example here. So, these are functional groups, the common functional groups found in most biological molecules. You have the acetyl group, the aldehyde group, the amide, the amine. So, as you can see, there is a large variety of um, uh, there is a variety here of structures. You have, you see, the oxygens, single bonds and double bonds. You have nitrogens, so on and so forth. So when you see them, those are functional groups. So I'll be linking another video about functional groups in the folder. So in uh, in biochemistry or in studying the chemistry involving biomolecules, it's very important to know the structure. So, in, uh, we have several ways to represent structures of your organic molecules. You have the structural formula, simplified carbon ring structures, the ball and stick, and the space feeding models. So, in modeling them, so you must remember for make, creating a structure, it's a Lewis structure, a very simplified Lewis structure. So, each line is considered a covalent band. Two lines means you have a double band, three lines for a triple band. So, the, in your actual uh, structural formula here, this is the overt version. So, it's very, um, very detailed. So, you can see each carbon and each hydrogen. And this is just a simple molecule. It's so actually considered a very small molecule. And in drawing this structure, it's quite complicated. It's very difficult to see here uh, which is which actually. That's why we have a simplified structural formula on the right. So in the simplified formula, we do not we no longer write carbons and hydrogens except for the hydrogen bonded to oxygen or nitrogen. All carbons and all hydrogens bonded to carbon are no longer visible. So instead um, we just, how do we know if there's a carbon there? Corners. The corners Automatically, that means you have carbon in the corners. And then, we no longer represent the hydrogens. Because we, already, we all know that carbon has four bonds. It's a rule that carbon must have four bonds. That is why, for example, in this, uh, the carbon in this corner. So, you, have, you can see one, two, and three bonds to three lines. So, that means three bonds to that carbon. So, since you need four bonds, carbon always form four bonds. The fourth automatically is for hydrogen. So we no longer um, show that in the simplified formula. So another look at your ball and stick model. So we have this uh, structural formula and then we have this ball and stick model. So this is the ball and stick model. So unlike the simplified formula, the ball and stick model, we write every atom and every uh, element. So you have the carbons, the black ones, the hydrogens are the white, oxygen for the reds, nitrogen are blue. That's the usual uh, conventional way of showing them. But normally, um, in journal publications, we need to determine which is which based on the color. So you need to still identify it because it's not set in stone. So you have here another a structural representation which is your ball and stick model or also ah, sorry that's the ball and stick it's the space feeding model so space feeding model they are balls the the atoms are shown as balls you do not uh, like the ball and stick you, you you have sticks to show your bonds but the space feeding model you don't you just show them uh, if you have two atoms bonded together you just fuse them. You the balls, the white balls, the hydrogen and the oxygen, the, the red ones. You just fuse them. So that means it's bonded to one another. So this is quite difficult to see because you will not know it's if it's double bond or single bond or even triple bond. And another thing, they tend to um, occlude one another, so it's a bit difficult to see. However, it's a good way to visualize the actual shape of the molecule because this is how your molecule actually looks like. So, another concept that you need to, uh, to remember in studying biochemistry, in studying uh, biomolecules, is the concept of polymers. So, where we have, if you have heard of the polymers, 
So, polymers are very large structures made up of repeating units. So, when you say poly, many, and merge parts. So, it's a very large molecule with many parts. And the, the, the constituent of that, the repeating unit within the polymer is called the monomers. The mono, which means one, and mer, part. So, one part is very simple. So, we have four distinct classifications of biomolecules, which is the carbohydrates, the proteins, the nucleic acids, and the lipids. So each of them have polymers, and, and since they are polymers, they have their own repeating subunits or monomers. So just a brief introduction, we have your, for the carbohydrates, the class of carbohydrates. The polymers for carbohydrates are polysaccharides, and you have the monomers as the sugars or the monosaccharides. For the proteins, you have, of course, the polypeptide chain, or sometimes it's called just the protein chain. And then the monomer for that is the amino acid. So the repeating subunit uh, constituent is your amino acids. For your nucleic acids, that's the polymer, and it's made up of nucleotides. Now, for the lipids, uh, the, the closest one is the fats or the triglycerides, and it's made up of fatty acids. So that is just a brief introduction. Uh, later, in the succeeding videos, we will be seeing each classification in more detail. So metabolism, uh, because we have monomers and polymers, of course, how do we form polymers? How do we break down polymers to create the monomers? So metabolism are all activities in the cell which require, which cells acquire and use energy to construct, rearrange, and split organic molecules. So it's very important, necessary function to live, grow, and reproduce. So each um, metabolic activity, each reaction inside your body requires an enzyme. So, although hemoglobin is not an enzyme, uh, this, the, 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 the illustration here is a hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is not enzyme, it's, an, it's a transport molecule. So, an enzyme is a catalyst. It speeds up the reaction. But for hemoglobin, it's more of a transport. It transports oxygen throughout your body. So, you have here three different representations of hemoglobin. So, as you can see, hemoglobin is a very large molecule made up of hundreds of atoms. So this is the space filling model of your hemoglobin. So you can see many hundreds of atoms there. And this is your surface model. This is actually what hemoglobin looks like in your, inside your body. So the, the space filling model is a, good, um, is a very good way to visualize or to estimate your space, surface model. So in the surface model, you can see here your heme group. You cannot see that in the space filling model because of the clash of many different colors. But in here, it's very visible. Uh, the heme group which in which your oxygen attaches. That's how your hemoglobin transports oxygen. And then this is the ribbon model. The ribbon model is more of uh, more for the, you know, the structure. So it allows us to visualize how the structure of hemoglobin form. So here is the ribbon model showing the different um, configurations of the protein chain. So since a protein is a polymer, that's actually a chain. The chain is folded upon itself. So you form uh, helices. You have several, uh, many different helices, as you can see here. So you have the blues and the greens. Those, that represents different protein chains. So hemoglobin is made up of four different protein chains that interact with one another. So that is your ribbon model. So in metabolism, as, you, as I said, this is the, the overall uh, chemical reactions inside your body. So we have two types of metabolism, the catabolism and the anabolism. Catabolism involves the breaking down of your polymers to create the monomers. So the reaction here involves hydrolysis. It's called hydrolysis because it requires water, a water molecule in order for them to break, uh, in order for the bonds between the monomers to break. So hydrolysis breaks down polymers to monomers. And then the other catabolic react, uh, the other the other metabolic reaction is called anabolism. It is the building up, uh, the building up process. It's it is where you have monomers. You have monomers that um, you, you build up 
you, uh, you bond them together to form polymers. So, succeeding chains of polymers. So, in the process, you produce water as a byproduct. That's why it's called condensation because you have, you condense water out. This can also be called dehydration because you, it removes water from the molecule. You see water as a byproduct. So, that's it for the different metabolic reactions. So, in the next um, part of this video, we'll be discussing about the carbohydrates and the lipids.